when you subject a solution of a monosaccharide to strong base, isomerization reactions occur to generate a mixture of different sugars. For the particular example of D-glucose, we observe a mixture of glucose, the C2 epimer mannose, and a fructose in the ratio you see here. To begin thinking about the mechanism of this process, consider the open chain form of glucose and what groups you might envision as acidic. Of course, we could imagine the hydroxyl groups as acidic, and this is one important mode of reactivity for carbohydrates when, for instance, an electrophile is added along with base. However, in this webcast, I'd like to focus on a different possibility. You might imagine that the position alpha to the carbonyl group of open chain sugars, often called C2 or carbon 2, is an acidic position. Loss of a proton from this position under strongly basic conditions produces a planar enolate anion. This enolate is notable not just because it's planar, but also because it's what we might call an enedilate. There are two oxygen atoms attached to the double bond. Thus, we would expect both carbons of the double bond to potentially be nucleophilic. This opens the door to two possible mechanistic pathways, which correspond to the two new products we observe, mannose and fructose. First, let's imagine re-delivery of the proton to carbon-2, but on the opposite face from which it was taken. In essence, we've altered the configuration of C2 without doing anything else to the rest of the molecule. This epimerization process gives mannose as a final product. What about protonation at C1? If we imagine the base acting in a general way, we see that protonation at carbon-1 produces a new carbonyl group. The carbonyl group has shifted to C2, and a new proton has found its way to C1. This ketose is just the D-fructose product we observed. The ridiculous length of time required for this process is no coincidence. It's a consequence of the fact that C2 is not the most acidic position in sugar molecules. It takes a very long time for the very small amount of enedilate present to convert to an equilibrium mixture of isomers. In the next webcast, we'll examine the reactivity of sugar hydroxyl groups, which are the most acidic positions in sugars. After deprotonation, the resulting alkoxide anions make great nucleophiles.